So in integral calculus, there's a lot of really nice reduction formulas for families of integrals. So there are commonly known ones involving sine, cosine, secant, and tangent, which are coming on the screen right now. There are also some reduction formulas involving exponential functions and logarithmic functions, which are on the screen now. And so I found a new one today. Well, I didn't find it. I saw it in a textbook, my favorite calculus textbook. Maybe post in the comments if you know which one that is. And that is a reduction formula involving a rational function. And this is most definitely not the original source for this reduction formula, just because it's probably been well known for a long, long, long time. And so our goal for today will be to build a reduction formula for the integral of one over x squared plus one to the n. And this is like some arbitrary n at the moment. But then if we fix n as a natural number, we'll find a nice closed form for the same integral from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's maybe get to this first. So I'm going to start with the trick of taking this numerator and adding zero. And what version of zero should I add? Well, probably a version so that I can cancel out something in the denominator. So I'm going to notice that one is the same thing as one plus x squared minus x squared. So that's pretty obvious because x squared minus x squared is zero. So now let's throw that into the numerator and then split this into two different integrals. So that's gonna leave me with one plus x squared over x squared plus one to the n dx. And that comes from this bit right here. So I'll underline that in green. And then we'll have minus the integral of x squared, but I'm actually gonna write that as x times x dx over x squared plus one to the n. Okay, and that's coming from this integral, which I write from the blue part right here. Okay, so you might say, well, why did I write that as x times x dx? And I did that so I could use integration by parts. So let's see what integration by parts is motivated by this setup right here. So I can let u equal x, and then I can let dv equal x over x squared plus one to the nth dx. So notice that x dx over this, well, that's really nice because that allows us to integrate this via the power rule. Unless, of course, n is equal to 1, but if n was equal to 1, we probably wouldn't have gone down this road anyway. Okay, so if we've made this choice for u, that tells us that du is equal to dx. And then if we've made this choice for v, and then if we've made this choice for dv, that means that v is equal to minus one over two n minus two, and then one over x squared plus one to the n minus one. So that's maybe a little bit tricky to see, but let's just recall that this x plus one to the n in the denominator is really acting like an x squared plus one to the minus n. So when we increase the exponent by one and then smash it back into the denominator, we get this. Now you might say, well, where did this factor of two come from? Well, that came from this x squared. We've got to divide by that as well. So in fact, we used a little bit of a substitution to go from dv to v. Okay, then what about this bit right here? Well, actually, that's going to be canceled down to something which will be with our power reducing formula. This one plus x squared will cancel this down to n minus one. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have the integral of one over x squared plus one to the n minus one. So that's actually good news because like I said, we wanna write this in terms of previous integrals. And then what do we have left? So we have minus u times v, but let's notice that u times v has a minus sign built in. So that'll cancel with this and leave us with x over 2n minus two times x squared plus one to the n minus one. So that's our uv. 
and then we'll have minus the integral of v du. So in that case, we have three minus signs, one built into the integration by parts formula, one from this v, and then one built into this minus from this decomposition right here. So all in all, we'll have a minus sign. So we'll have minus the integral, like I said, of v du, and so that's going to give us this 1 over 2n minus 2 here, and then 1 over x squared plus 1 to the n minus 1 dx. So that's what we're left with. But now let's notice that this integral and this integral are essentially the same up to a constant, so we can combine them together. Maybe giving ourselves a common denominator of 2n minus 2. Then we can bring this thing out front, leaving us in the end with x over 2n minus 2 times x squared plus 1 to the n minus 1, and then plus 2n minus 3 over 2n minus 2 times the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 to the n minus 1. So looking at our extreme left-hand side, and our extreme right-hand side, we see that we have a nice way of writing this nth integral in terms of this n minus first integral. Okay, so now let's look at the definite integral that will follow from this. This will actually happen pretty easily. Notice that if we do one step of decomposition via this, we'll end up with an x in the numerator and then an x squared plus n minus 1 in the denominator. <clears throat> we'll notice if n is a natural number, then this bit is going to go to 0. Well, if n is equal to 1, then this bit won't exist in the first place. And if n is equal to 2 or anything higher, then the limit as x goes to infinity will have that denominator like take over. So suffice it to say, throughout the decomposition, this is always going to go to 0. So that means we just get a product of a bunch of terms like this all the way down until we have just a first power right there. So we can write that out with product notation. So notice this is going to be the product as k goes from 1 up to n minus 1 of 2 times n minus k minus 1 over 2 times n minus k, like that. And then finally, all of this is being multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So again, this is reducing from the nth power to the n minus first power. That would be the k equals 1 term. And then to the n minus second power, that would be the k equals 2 term. All the way down until we have it in terms of the first power, which would be the n minus 1 term. Notice this is encoding just the buildup of all of these coefficients. Okay. Next up, we can just use a fact which is pretty standard that this is equal to pi over 2. Notice we get the inverse tangent. Taking the limit as the argument goes to infinity, that's well known to be pi over 2, and then inverse tangent of 0 is 0. So we get a pi over 2 from that. Then I can factor a 2 out of the numerator and the denominator here. I'll erase those two 2's, and then I'll be left with a half here. Okay, so let's write down what we've got. We have pi over 2, and then in the numerator, we have n minus 3 halves times n minus 5 halves all the way down to what? It's going to be all the way down to 1 half. So this is the k equals 1 term. This is the k equals 2 term. Finally, this is the k equals n minus 1 term. Okay, and then what do we have here? Well, so the first term will be n minus 1, the second term will be n minus 2, all the way down to 1. But that's just an n factorial in the denominator, or not an n factorial, that's just an n minus 1 factorial in the denominator. That's like the definition of n minus 1 factorial, in fact. Then we have a descending product of n minus 1 terms in the numerator. 
So if we've got that descending product in the numerator, n minus one factorial in the denominator, that's exactly a binomial coefficient. So that leaves us with pi over two, and then n minus three halves choose n minus one. So I think that's a nice closed form for this integral, and that's a good place to stop.